Hi. So uh, starting from this session, we want to start talking about machine learning, right? So that's what the course is about. Now I think we are ready to jump into machine learning. So before we jump into writing code and understanding different algorithms, I want to spend some time talking about what exactly is machine learning, right? So machine learning is basically a methodology in which we want machines to learn, right? Uh, and for machines to learn, we want to we are ready to provide them previous data. We are ready to provide them past experiences so that they can predict the upcoming events. So that they can predict what's going to happen in future. Right? So that's exactly what that's exactly the way we humans learn as well. For example, we learn how to cross a road by continuously looking at how exactly people are crossing road, right? Like we, for the initial some time, we were not supposed to cross the road alone, but eventually we have learned how to do it by looking at a lot of examples. And, and basically that's exactly how we learn a lot of different things as well, okay? So that's basically what machine learning is. So the idea is that if machine has looked at enough past data, it should be able to pretty accurately uh, predict what's going to happen in future. Okay, so there are various kind of machine learning, and but like the the main crux of machine learning basically lies here. Now, sometimes people talk about AI, and sometimes they are talking about machine learning. Now, what exactly is the difference between AI and machine learning? Right, AI versus ML. So, AI actually is a, a part of computer science, which basically means that let's somehow make machines intelligent so that they can take smart decisions, right? Now, a machine can take smart decisions basically by two ways. Either as a programmer, I can write down the rules using which the machine should take a decision or we write algorithms in a way that a machine by looking at a lot of past data can automatically learn what to do in future. So in one case, I am specifically saying this is how you should take decision. In the second case, I am saying that I am not going to tell you what exactly you need to do. Look at all this data and figure out what you think should be done. Okay. So that's basically uh, all of this combined is AI, right? Machines being smart, machines being able to take make good decisions is AI. So AI is this big part and machine learning is a big component of this. So machine learning is actually a subset of AI and uh, day by day it's increasing to be uh, almost same as AI as in like it's more this circle is uh, growing in size in the sense that rule based intelligent is basically not uh, giving us as good results as machine learning is. So, but that being said, ML is a subset of AI. And the idea is that idea of machine learning is that as a developer, I should not as a programmer, I should not have to exactly write if this happens, then you need to do this, right? That's basically the whole idea of AI and machine learning. Okay. So what are some applications of machine learning? Actually, machine learning nowadays is getting used everywhere, right? Everywhere in web for sure. Almost all major websites are using machine learning in some way or the other. For example, uh, like how exactly, what kind of content should we give to which user, right? That's machine learning. If, for example, if I go to a, a news website, most likely I'm going to, like every user is going to see the same content. But that's not really true for let's say a Twitter or a Facebook, right? They want the feed to be customized to each individual user. So that's basically machine learning, right? So they are trying to predict what's going to be the best content for me that I'll be interested in based upon whatever I've done previously or whatever other users have done previously, right? So that's a huge application of machine learning. Ads, which ads am I more likely to click on, right? That's again, machine learning recommendations right like if i'm going to let's say a restaurant service provider restaurant data provider they want to uh, show me restaurants which they feel i'm going to like more right like on facebook you get to see people you may know pages you may like all these features are recommendation features these are all built using machine learning but more and more machine learning is actually getting more important outside 
uh, this web domain as well, right? Uh, for example, self-driving cars, they are a perfect example of machine learning being applied. Uh, other than that, uh, a lot of interesting applications of machine learning has been in use for a long time. For example, oil companies have been using the seismic data to predict uh, oil reservoirs for a long time. That's again basically a machine learning problem. Uh, another very important application of machine learning is using seismic data to predict earthquakes, right? Using past earthquake data to predict when exactly we can expect an earthquake to happen. Now, there's like immense opportunities to apply machine learning in. And it's like if you can predict like an earthquake which is going to happen, you can basically save so many lives and property. So it just, the, the possibilities are immense and we are just getting started with various kind of machine learning applications and most of these applications they are they haven't reached their full potential yet and we are still moving very slowly towards getting to what can be a really revolutionary technology okay so that's the difference between ai and ml and that's how basically uh, we can use machine learning in various uh, various parts of uh, that's basically how machine learning is getting used everywhere okay so one more term that people get confused with is data mining. Data mining just means uh, look finding information out of a huge amount of data. You have huge amount of data and you want to figure out what exact some information from this whole amount of data. Now that can be done using machine learning algorithms. That could just be a simply data analytics uh, problem. That would mean that I am uh, like let's say that by looking at data I come up with an hypothesis and I try to verify the hypothesis by running some queries on the data. Right? That's not really machine learning but that's exactly what data mining could be as well. Right? So again data mining is something in which machine learning can be applied but it's not same as machine learning. Okay. Now uh, if we talk about within machine learning there are various type of machine learning. So what are these types? So the first type that we are going to focus almost one third of the course is supervised machine learning, supervised learning. Okay. The second is unsupervised learning. And the third is reinforcement. So what exactly does this mean, right? What exactly does it mean? So uh, supervised machine learning basically means, supervised learning basically means uh, that I have exact data that these were the input conditions, these were the conditions and this is what happened. So I have the input as well as the output and I have clear markings that this is what I want the output to be uh, for previous data, right? And what I want to do is in future, if I get this only the input part, I want to predict the output. For example, let's say I'm given data for 1000 houses, their features as input. How big is the house? Where is it located? How old is it? How many rooms does it have? And all those things. And I'm given the output to be the sale price. At what price we were able to sell it. So these are the input features and there is a clear demarcation that this is the output that we are looking for. So in future what's going to happen is if a new house comes to market, we will be given the input and we would be supposed to predict the output. Okay. So that's basically a problem of supervised learning. When the input data, the past experiences that, that are given to you, they are clearly marked with the output that you are looking for, right? Another example could be, uh, again, right? Like, uh, let's say that we are given a lot of data on uh, tumors and we are supposed to predict whether a tumor is malignant or not, right? So, this is basically a type of tumor. Uh, so, 
So we are supposed to predict whether it is malignant or benign, right? So we are given a lot of past data on tumors that we have already studied and we know whether they are malignant or benign and now we are given a new entry which is basically just the input feature and we are supposed to predict whether it is malignant or not, okay? So that's again a supervised learning problem because the input data, the past experience that you are given has a clear demarked output, okay? So that's how supervised learning we define something to be supervised learning. Now, what is unsupervised learning? So, unsupervised learning will be uh, something that basically is not clearly marked as output for us. For example, let's say that we want to uh, split all Facebook users into, let's say, 10 groups on basis of how uh, how they are like each other, like, like how likely, uh, how close to each other they are. Not in terms of uh, that they know each other, but in terms of they are similar, right? I want to put similar people into one cluster, irrespective of whether they know each other or not. Now, I just was, I have this set and I want to make clusters, right? And I don't know how exactly these clusters can be formed. Now that can, that, that's going to be based upon all their features, that can, that's going to be based on all their profile and everything. So that's an unsupervised problem. We don't have any clearly marked output, right? We have a lot of data and we want to cluster the data into different parts. Now that's a clear cut unsupervised problem because the data that you have is not marked with any output. You're trying to find patterns into the data. Reinforcement learning actually is very, very interesting. This kind of means like how you will train like how generally we get trained, right? Like uh, for positive behavior, you get incentivized and for negative behavior, you get disincentivized. So for example, if you want to make a software which plays chess, right? So you let the, you let the software take whatever step they want to take within the rules, right? Like the horse can may move how many steps that's basically defined, but whether to move the horse or the elephant, that's something that we leave to the, uh, the, to the software. Now, as the software is making decisions, th if they win, they get some positive points. If they lose, they get some negative points. And if the software keeps playing more and more games, eventually it's going to learn what moves are basically good for me and what are bad for me. Because it knows that it's going to get incentives if it takes positive decisions, if it takes decisions which lead to a win and it gets these disincentivized if it makes decisions which lead to losing, right? So that's generally what we call reinforcement learning and self-driving cars actually, uh, it's a huge application of reinforcement learning and a lot of other places as well, okay? So when whatever type of machine learning we are talking about, we are talking about having past experiences, having a lot of data. Where does this data come from? So in past, in the past, we were not storing all that data. Data storing was expensive. That's not the case anymore. Nowadays, we store each and every data point that is getting generated, right? So we are, we have so much data. That data can be the seismic data, as I told you, uh, like, like it's basically whatever the earth plates are moving, like whatever the information that we can get from that. Along with that, any click that you're doing on any website, anything that you're posting, all of that is getting stored somewhere. And all of that can be used to potentially predict what you are going to do in future or what, how, if we are going to see an earthquake or how exactly we, things are going to change. Right. So with this, I just want to like uh, from next video onwards, we'll jump into what exactly, how exactly machine learning works and all of those things. But I just wanted to like introduce how amazing this field is and what all we can achieve by learning machine learning. Okay. Thank you.